materialists are attached to hearing and chanting the topics of their wives and children. So that means we have a lot of attachment to our relationships. Learned scholars are attached to hearing and chanting the topics of scriptural debates. And again, attachment to the jnana. Yogis are attached to the distress produced from controlling their life air. So over here he is talking about the trance. Ascetics are attached to their performance of austerities and pseudo-renunciates are attracted to the cultivation of dry speculative knowledge. But the servants of Sri Chaitanya are always fixed in the path of Bhakti Yoga. Because the devotees of the Lord have adopted the process of devotional service, which is inclusive of detachment, giving up other inferior attachments, they are real renunciates or yukta viragis. That is why the Supreme Lord is addressed here as Yogesh. So it's like a yog and ish. Ish means the Lord, Lord of Yoga. Because the servants of Yogeshwar, like Uddhav, dovetail all other yoga processes in the execution of Bhakti Yoga. The Lord is addressed here as Yoga Vinyasa. Because the constitutional propensities of the living entities clearly manifest in the practice of Bhakti Yoga, the Lord is called Yoga Atma. In addition, because He is the source of all types of yoga, He is referred to as Yoga Sambhava. Only persons who are situated in devotional service achieve the supreme benefit of life and thus are able to properly give up all non-devotional propensities. That is the most beneficial thing that can happen to a spirit soul. Sri Krishna had mercifully taught this Paramhansya Dharma in the form of Bhakti Yoga to Uddhav. Renouncing the enjoyment of the fruits of one's karam and rejecting the fruits of Jnana or the cultivation of impersonalism cannot be the cause of the living entity's ultimate benefit because such activities are temporary and dependent. Those who have no interest in hearing the topics of the Supreme Lord are perpetually diverted from the transcendental mellows as a result of being misguided by different yoga processes such as Hatha Yoga, Karam Yoga, Raj Yoga and Gyan Yoga. When mundane Ras displays prominence, then such people in order to neutralize it, endeavor to practice different kinds of mystic yoga processes and thus are perpetually bereft of bhakti yoga. Okay, so we got to understand uh, all of this uh, in its right uh, light. Okay, they are not saying that hat yoga or karam yoga or raj yoga is not important. In fact, Bhagavad Gita is nothing but raj yoga. And Hatha Yoga is, why do we do Hatha Yoga? To keep this body healthy, because we live in this body. But ultimately, we got to cultivate more and more Brahma God. So it's not that other paths are not good, but we got to remember that ultimate goal is to become one with God. Okay, so just read all this with the right understanding please so verse number 15 tyagoho ayam dushkaro bhum kamanam vishe atma bhi sutaram tavai sarv atman abhagtair iti memati my dear lord o super soul of all I think that it is extremely difficult for those whose minds are attached to sense gratification and who are bereft of devotion unto you to renounce material desires. If it is difficult to follow this process even for your devotees whose minds are still attached to material enjoyment, then there is no doubt that it must be very difficult for the non-devotees. Uddhav said, the devotees of the Supreme Lord never desire to accept anything that has not been first offered to the Lord. 
Therefore, apart from the ingredients of the Lord's service, it is natural for them to give up the desire for enjoying objects that are not related to the Lord. But lusty non-devotees who are busy collecting objects for sense gratification are fit to be called materialists because they have no propensity for the Lord's service. There is no possibility for such people to give up the desire for enjoying objects that are not related to the Lord. This is my opinion. So Uddhav is the one who is saying this now. Okay. So even though Uddhav was the greatest of the Pianis before, but we know that he became a Bhagat. And at this point, he is definitely talking from a mind and the heart of a Bhagat. That materialism or living a life which is totally attached to the materialistic view, he says, it's no good as a devotee, we should live. So, aham mam aham iti mood mati vigada tvam maya virchitatmanihi sa anubandhe tatvam anjasaha nigaditam bhavtaha yathaham sansadhayami bhagwan anushadhi vritam. My dear Lord, I am certainly foolish because I consider my body and bodily relations to be all and all. Even though these things are simply products of your illusory energy. Thus I think I am this body and these relatives and possessions are mine. My Lord, please instruct your foolish servant so that I can give up this illusion and surrender at your lotus feet. So he is showing his faith and he is showing the humility also that please give me some knowledge because I'm too attached to these worldly relationships. So it looks like he is talking for all of us. My mind is absorbed in mundane conceptions because I am attached, attached to my body, wife and children which are created by Maya. The material body is just like a blind well. Therefore, it is my first duty to protect myself from that well. Because what happens in the well, we just go deeper and deeper. We can sink into it. Then the knowledge that will be gained by following the Lord's instructions will automatically follow. This is the sum and substance of this verse. Those who are attacked by Nam Pradha, in the form of maintaining the conception of I and mine, pollute their real ego due to the influence of the illusory energy of the Lord of Vakunti. At that time, they display no power to follow the instructions of the Supreme Lord because due to lack of surrender, the living entities become bewildered by false ego. Due to the influence of false ego, the living entities become averse to the Supreme Lord and are then bound by the ropes of Maya. On that platform, the constitutional position of the living entities becomes covered. In other words, their inclination towards the Lord's service slows down. This is why Uddhav is praying to Krishna to remain situated in the service propensity without deviation. And we often talk about this Maya. Maya has three kinds of ropes. We get attached to the relationships. Right? So the name given by our rishis is Putreshna. So any relationship. It could be the son or the daughter or the husband or the brother or the sister. Any relationship. Putreshna. Then there is a Viteshna. With the, any kind of a material. With, with means wealth, the money. But it could be anything else also in this Maya. And the third is Lokeshna. 
these are like a location means the name and the fame so these are the three very very strong ropes we get bound by okay we got to be careful about it it is like a maya ke teen paash so let's look at verse number 17 सत्य से ते स्वदृश आत्मन आत्मनो नय वक्ताश विभुदेश्व अक्षे विमोहित धीयस तव मय मे ब्रह्म आदिस्तनु भृत बहिर्थ भाव दिस इज वर्ष नंबर सेवेंटीन मै डियर लॉर्ड यू आर द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गाड हेड and by your mercy you reveal yourself to the hearts of your pure devotees other than you i don't see anyone who can impart to me perfect knowledge you are the perfect teacher and not the demigods in the heavenly planets who are the demigods those are the devatas so he says i want to get the knowledge from you you are the god In fact, the demigods, even Lord Brahma, are bewildered by your illusory energy, Maya. The demigods are also conditioned souls who accept their material bodies and bodily expansions as ultimate reality. So, the word "satyasya" in this verse has been used in the dative case, which means the knowledge about the self. has been produced from you ke satya se you because you are the basis of all time place and circumstances so everything has come from god so that's what satya se means you are the super soul and i am different from you although the supreme lord is sometimes counted amongst the demi gods he is nevertheless the self manifest absolute truth the super soul and the eternal personality of god head although partial power of supremacy of the supreme lord is present in the vaishnav demigods the moment they fail to display an eagerness for the service of the supreme lord they fall down from the worship of the lord and plunge into the ocean of forgetfulness therefore if one is to consider the position of the demigods who are devoid of service to the supreme lord one will find that they lack self manifest complete knowledge from this one can understand that the super soul lord vishnu is separate from the living entities such as the demigods so in this context when we read the word vishnu that really means brahm or parabrahm okay you got to see which term is used in in which context okay and demi god likes brahma who are approachable by human knowledge have a difference between their body and their self all of them are bewildered by the illusory energy of vishnu and consider the objects of the external world as the goal of their lives the worshippers of the demi gods who are attracted to the material sense objects sound touch form taste and smell are similarly covered like their respective objects of worship by the illusory energy of lord maya aversion to the service of the supreme lord is the proof of their non devotional endeavors this statement of uddhav is greatly admired by the servants of shri chaitanya they do not consider shri chaitanya dev who is non different from the son of the king of vraj to be merely a spiritual master like vyas dev okay so you can see that uh, the devotion for your guru is always shown in these commentaries and the purports also okay devotion for the guru so they are saying he is he is our guru but he is no different from god himself so there's like a, a, a love for your guru is always seen that 
So again, Uddhav is the one who's saying still, number 18, Tasmat Bhavantam Anvadhyam Anantaparam Saravagyam Ishwaram Akunta Vikunta Dishnayam Nirvishna Dheer Aham Uhi Vrijina Bitaptaho Narayanam Narasakam Sharanam Prapadyate Therefore, O Lord, feeling weary of material life and tormented by its distresses, I now surrender unto you because you are the perfect master. You are the same Narayan who is beyond the influence of material time and space. You are the unlimited, all-knowing Supreme Personality of Godhead whose spiritual abode is vacant, is free from all disturbances. You are free from all faults and you are the sole benefactor of all living entities. Okay? The same kind of a devotion we saw in Arjun's sayings when he really had that vision of Virat Gurdva after that. But Uddhava has already lived a life of a devotee. So that's why even before asking the questions, we can see that love and the devotion for Lord Krishna in these verses. He says, O Lord, I am especially tortured by material miseries. Therefore, I surrender unto you. See, this is what Vairagya is. See, majority of us, we want to even go to God or Guru for material opulence. Over here, he says, I'm tortured by material miseries. And I surrender unto you. Sometimes a person may possess all good qualities, yet may commit sinful activities. So how to give up all material association is being described here. The Lord is unlimited. Or he who has no end, in other words, the Lord is beyond the influence of material time and space. Some people are ungrateful. But you are not so. You are omniscient. Some people cannot give protection. But you are not like that. You are the supreme controller. Some people are a source of inauspiciousness. But you are not like that. Your abode of Vakunt is free from anxiety and the material time factor. You are Narayan. So in this verse, we see the word Narayan here used for Lord Krishna. You are the supreme shelter of even the Purush avatars. You are most compassionate because you are the ever well-wisher of all living entities. You appear in this world simply to exhibit your mercy to the conditioned souls. See, that's why Lord comes again and again in different forms, different of gods. Compassion for people like us. Otherwise, how will we learn? Where will we go? Oh Lord, the demigods fulfill our desires. Because the demigods who supply our necessities are not omniscient, rather they are limiting, limited living entities of this material world created by Maya. So demigods like Indra Devta, Varun Devta, Agni Devta, those are called demigods. You are actually the true friend of all living entities. <clears throat> because I have a tendency to commit sinful activities, and I am greedy, I have no other alternative than to take shelter at your feet. So Uddhav is showing topmost humility and surrender and love for God in these verses over here. Verse number 19. Now Lord Krishna is talking. Prayen manu jana lokehe Lok tatu vichakshnaha samudranti hi atmanam atamna eva ashub ashyat. The Supreme Lord said, generally, persons who are able to understand the truth of this material world 
try to elevate themselves beyond such a life of inauspiciousness, which simply consists of gross sense gratification. So in other words, if we are just living a life just to gratify our senses, that is a life of inauspiciousness, according to Lord Krishna. Because there's a higher purpose to live, not just sense gratification. So Lord Krishna replied to Uddhav, you are thinking yourself to be a fool. But I do not find a wise man like you among all learned persons. It is seen in this world that some people who are inferior to you attain spiritual knowledge on the strength of their own intelligence, even without accepting instructions from the spiritual master. But you are the crest jewel among all wise men. You know the spiritual science instructed by me. Often many experienced people who are aware of the consequences of auspicious and inauspicious activities cannot deliver themselves from the inauspicious desire of material enjoyment. So Lord Krishna is again encouraging Uddhava because he wants Uddhava to transmit all this knowledge to the rishis in the Badrika Ash. So that's why he's important. Even now Uddhava Uddhav is a jnani also, a bhagat also. But he's encouraging him further and giving him more knowledge so that he can impart this knowledge to the Rishi Narnarai. Only those who give up all endeavors to satisfy the demands of the body and mind, which are opposite to their constitutional positions, are actually self-realized and are able to deliver themselves from the desire for material enjoyment. Okay? So because our body and the senses automatically, they just run towards the sense gratification. So we got to use this knowledge to have an eye on the higher journey also. Self-realization, he says. Let's do one more verse and then we'll discuss it. Number 20. Atmanaho gurur atma eva purusha se visheshataha yat pratyaksha Anumana Bhyana Shreyo Asva Anuvindate O Uddhava. The self is the foremost spiritual master of the human beings because the self can attain supreme auspiciousness on the strength of his direct and indirect perception. A person can sometimes achieve the higher auspiciousness directly and sometimes through indirect perception. The conditioned state can never create inauspiciousness to those who are self-realized. See, self-realized, that means realization of who we really are. That's a self-realized. Therefore, self-realized souls accept the super soul as their spiritual master without being entangled in the material conception of love. Such self-realized liberated souls, though living in this world, actually attain auspiciousness by using the two kinds of evidence, direct and indirect perception. Okay, so let's stop it here because we don't want to go too fast. These are pretty deep verses and we can just have some discussion around this what we just read today. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadai Purnameva Visheshate Om Shanti 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 Om Thank you very much.